Hey guys, it's me Dax Moy from DaxMoy.com. Um, I'm here on, this is now day 12 of my January Jumpstart 2013. Okay, so it's the uh, Sunday the 13th of January. And I'm just just here really with quite a, hopefully a, sh a short message for you, um, which is about plateau busting, um, about the idea that look, that we're about that point in the program where many, many people are going to start to see their plateaus come in. They're going to start to see that, okay, they lost their first five, six, seven, eight pounds, whatever it was, and that about this point, they jump on the scale and they kind of, they look and they scratch their head and they're a bit worried that things don't seem to be happening the way they once were. Okay, so I just want to put your mind at ease. And not only do I want to put your mind at ease, I want to kind of remind you of some of the things that you're supposed to be doing in order to make sure that you get the best possible effect out of the program. And I also want you to kind of come at this from a slightly different mental framework than maybe you have been. Because look, it's easy to jump on the scales, look down, see that they haven't budged, and get, you know, let's not beat around a bush, get pissed off. Get pissed off that you've put effort in for three or four days and you suddenly see that the scales aren't moving anymore or worse still you see that a kilo has shifted in the upward direction and that's kind of that's doing your head in okay well look a couple of things to think about here one this whole this whole kind of one to 1.5 kilos variance in either direction really doesn't count for very much okay um not to put too fine a point on it you can you know if you need to go if you need to go to the toilet, you could be carrying more than a more than a kilo around in you in term in terms of urine and fecal matter, right? So let's not get too upset by the fact that maybe just because you jumped on the scales at a slightly different time or you haven't been to the loo yet or any of these things, that now you're suddenly thinking that the program isn't working, right? Let that go. Okay, just let that go. Secondly, if you're if you're a female, and we've got a lot of females doing the January jump start. If you're a woman and you're going through the program, you have to take your monthly menstrual cycle into account during this whole thing. Okay, in, in the in the build up to start it, starting your period, you are gaining, you actually are holding on to much more water, so you will gain weight because you can't hold water and weigh less. Okay, the two things are are in opposition to each other, right? So just understand that that. It's not about what happens in the short term. It's not these acute changes. We all love to see them. I know all personal trainers, myself included at times, you know, we've made a big deal about how big the results are and how fast they are. But the reality is that we have to understand that we're playing a much longer game. In this case, we're playing a 30-day game and we're only 12 days into it. So if you jump on the scales and the scales don't read exactly what you want them to read or aren't aren't showing you what you would hope would or what you'd hoped would happen then let it go, okay? It doesn't really matter. What matters is what happens when the final whistle blows. And and also remembering that 30 days isn't the final whistle, right? It's the final whistle of our little push, our little jump start into January, which is exactly what this was supposed to be. You know, we're hopefully you're under no illusions that these 30 days are supposed to get you to exactly where you want to be with your body and everything is going to be perfect from that point forward. These 30 days are to... to instill new habits into you and get you thinking about your body in slightly different ways to maybe the way you have been okay next i want you to kind of appreciate that the scales are a pretty useless tool in this whole grand scheme of things right what i mean by that is that they're useless if they have the power the power and the ability to completely control your emotions yesterday because you lost two pounds you can walk off the scales, big smile on your face, and yes, everything's right in the world. And then today you jump on and nothing's happened or you've gained a pound back. And today is kind of, oh my God, you know, is it working? Is, is, what, is what I'm investing in going to ever deliver me the results? It's pretty useless if it's going to take you to and from that place. Because when you're feeling in that pissed off place, what's the first thing you want to do? You want to go back to all your comfort foods. Okay, and all the comfort foods are the things that are actually more, most likely to have you piling on those pounds again, aren't they? Right, so just think about it from this perspective that your weight has nothing to do with what you look like. Okay, I am, I actually, you know, I weigh well over 100 kilos. Okay, much more at the start of this, but over 100 kilos. Now, most people, when they see me, they, they don't, they don't kind of think I'm as heavy as I actually am. It's because there's a lot of muscle in me. I train really, really hard. You've heard this before, muscle weighs more than fat, right? Well, you know, it's a, a pound of muscle and a pound of fat are exactly the same weight. So muscle muscle doesn't weigh more than fat. I guess what people mean is muscle is more dense. So you can have the same weight of muscle, but look much slimmer than another person of your weight who's carrying a lot of fat. 
Okay, so here's the first thing: use the mirror, look in the mirror, and see and see how you've improved, and relish those victories. This is an important part of busting the plateau. It's how you feel because stress, and particularly stress around your weight. You know, like, let's look at it this way: your body secretes a hormone called cortisol in every time you're stressed out. Okay, now. One of the things that we've been trying to do with this program is balance your cortisol, your cortisol equation in, in your body by certain practices that are getting you to hit, you know, hit shorter exercise periods and so on and so forth, get to sleep earlier, drink more water. All of this assists with cortisol, but a lot of that can be undone by stepping on the scales and being really, really pissed off with what hasn't happened for you today. Okay, So you can shoot your stress hormones up through the roof. And kind of, you know, kind of be doing the exact opposite to what all this training and clean nutrition is supposed to be. So don't stress over it. Just let it go. Just let it go. Okay. How are you going to let it go? Well, you can actually look at look at yourself in the mirror and you can see how far you've come. Right. Bloody hell! It's only twelve days into the journey. Enjoy that. Enjoy the fact that in twelve days you've made so many so many big changes. Right? And I don't just mean physically. Yes, what you see in the mirror is an important part. But how are you feeling? So many of you online have been telling me about how your energy is changing, and how how you feel about uh, how you feel about yourself, and your belief in the future, and all these kind of things. These are all changes that can't be underestimated. You can't suddenly throw them away just because you know you didn't budge one pound on the scales today, or at least you shouldn't. I guess you can, but you shouldn't because. You've got to see if you're if we're looking at long-term improvements. You've got to see this from a long-term perspective, and the long-term perspective is, is going to be very, very largely governed by your emotions. If you allow those those scales to own you and own every one of your emotions, I can promise you that this whole yo-yo thing that many of you have suffered across your entire life lose weight, gain weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight that's going to happen again, right? Because it's di directly tied into your emotions. So let's forget about that. Let's let's kick that one to the curb, right? Next, let's let's look at a few other things. It's how you look, it's how you feel, it's how you perform. Judge all of those things together, right? Now, so these other things, what are they? Well, right from the start of this program, when you read the Elimination Diet Handbook, which I hope you did, um, they, I, I told you in the handbook that you were supposed to be taking a, a number of supplements. Milk thistle, magnesium, and zinc. Okay, And it seems that a, a lot of people forget to take them or aren't taking them or are taking them erratically, understand that these are actually all very, very important to your result. The milk thistle is cleaning your liver and aiding you with the detoxification process. The faster you detox, the more of that excess water you're going to lose out of your out of your body, which means that you're going to see the scales move, okay? When it comes to when it comes to the zinc and magnesium, these are very, very important for you to take, especially within that last 90 to 60 minutes before bed, because they assist your body in the recovery from the training and actually resetting all of your hormone balance. Okay, if you're not taking those supplements, it, it can actually make a it can make a big difference to the end result. Should we have to take supplements our entire life? No. Okay, but at the moment we're assisting your body going through the entire detoxification phase and this idea of working out four times a day. Okay, so yes, a bit of extra supplementation can uh, can be useful, and I find that I find that it is useful to a lot of people. So take the supplements. How much should you take? Well, you know, I'm not allowed to prescribe supplementation. Okay, that's a kind of a, a medical no-no, right? But what I do say is that most 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 of my clients are advised to take somewhat in the region of about 400 milligrams a day of magnesium and around about 60 milligrams a day of the zinc okay so if you're consuming less than that as a supplement you're probably going to find that you're getting less less of a result if you're you know if you're some people are only taking the RDA which is only going to be about you know kind of um, 100 milligrams of zinc and 15 milligram uh, sorry 100 milligrams of magnesium and 15 milligrams of zinc if you're only taking that, you're only taking about a quarter of the amount that, that I'm suggesting here. Okay, so you know if you're taking too much magnesium because it it gives you diarrhea. Okay, magnesium is a primary constituent of of um, laxatives. Okay, so you'll you'll start you'll get diarrhea or you go very very soft if your magnesium is too high. Okay, but for most people, around about the 400 mark is actually you know more people than not actually do very very well at that point. So are you taking your supplements? If you're not, you're robbing yourself of results. Are you drinking the water that you're supposed to be drinking? Again, if you're not, you're robbing yourself of results. We're talking about one liter for every 50 pounds of body weight, right? But it's really important here that you are going through the process of sorting that water. If you're not, then essentially you're slowing your metabolism down, 
okay? A lot of people don't get this, a lot of fit, well, pretty much every fit pro doesn't get this, they don't understand this. They tell their clients to drink water, drink water, drink water. Now, you've got to understand that, you know, think about your metabolism and your, your thyroid hormone in particular, which governs your metabolism, is like setting fire in your cells. And in fact, one of the signs of a healthy metabolism is your body temperature. If your body temperature body temperature is kind of on the high, you know, warm to warm to hot side. That's a sign that your that your metabolism is is working really well. If you're colder, it's a sign that the fires are going out. Your metabolism is slowing down. Well, what's one of the things that we use to put fires out? Water. Okay, if you flood your body with water, you're putting your metabolic fires out. So how do we get around that? Well, we make sure that when you're drinking your water, you're actually taking the salts with it. Okay, you consume salt alongside of it. Then it doesn't become a flooding. You keep your electrolytes high. What does that also mean? If you keep your electrolytes high, you keep your metabolism high and you stay warm. Okay, so I don't want you flooding it, flooding your body with water. I don't want you throwing water on the fire and slowing your metabolism down, and that that could definitely be keeping you from results. Okay, what's another another thing that could be could be costing you results? Definitely your sleep. Now, if you you know you've been instructed to get to sleep by ten, ten thirty, at least five nights a week. Okay, um, this isn't just an off the top of my head thing. This is this is related to hormone physiology. It's how your hormones work, right? Most of your hormones do their best work when you go to sleep. It's not while you're awake that all of the weight loss changes and all the muscle changes occur. Most of it occurs while you're asleep. Okay, and so in order for in order for these hormones to do their best work, you have to get to sleep. Every hour past 10 o'clock that you're awake is like losing quarter of your ability to to kind of to get your results, right? So if you're going to bed at midnight, let's say, by the time by the time midnight comes around, you've lost 50% of your, of your potential result just by going to bed later. Okay? So is it important? Absolutely. Hell yes, it's important. You've got to get to sleep by 10 to 10.30. What that means is having a relaxation schedule put in so that ideally you're going up to your bed maybe maybe 10 o'clock, right? Even earlier is, is much better, right? But let's say 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock you go up to bed. All of your appliances have been switched off. All of it, you know, all of the kind of the computers and checking on your phone and all that kind of crap. You switch all of that off and instead you read a book or you relax or you meditate or you engage in some deep diaphragmatic breathing, okay, any of these things, but you go into a relaxation mode. If you're reading off of a, an iPad or a Kindle, bear in mind that you're still projecting light into your eyes. It's not the best way to relax, okay? It keeps you awake for longer. It'd be far better for you to be for you to be reading from a real book, okay? A real book with a low low bedside lamp, just like I've got here behind me. I'm in I'm in my, my bedroom at home at the moment. Okay, so it would be far better for you to do that for you for you to read a book relax chill out go you know listen to some relaxing music and then go to sleep don't go from being on the web answering a whole bunch of stuff watching an exciting movie come up to bed and try to sleep that's not really going to work we want you to go into deeper sleep right but look there's just a handful of things getting getting out of the stress of the scales okay starting to remember the importance of all of the other changes that you make, not just how you, how much you weigh, but how you look and how you feel and how you perform, okay? What your emotions are like, how far you've come, okay? And these are, again, this is, so here's another tip for you. How do you keep on track of all that? You keep on track of that with your victory journal. And I know a lot of people don't seem to be doing that at the moment. Now, if you keep hold of the victory journal and every night you sit down and you say, what has worked for me today? What hasn't worked for me? Why? Where did I fall over? Where did I struggle? How can I make tomorrow a better day? Okay, what am I really grateful for? What do I really appreciate about today, about the journey that I've been on? These are all parts of the job of your victory journal. They're to make sure that you stay tuned in to what's actually happening to you. And I can promise you, if you do these things, if you take your supplements, you fill in your victory journal, you drink enough water and you get to sleep, that you will pretty soon break through the plateau. Now, I've got some more supplements to encourage you to take a bit later on, a couple of days more into this journey. There's a few other tips that I've got for you. Okay, but right now, let's just make sure that you're using all of the information that you've already been given rather than looking for something else to bust this plateau. Because I promise you, most people aren't doing everything. They're doing some of it, but they're not doing everything. Let's get you doing everything and you'll soon see and feel the, feel the major change. I hope this has been useful to you. Um, you know, like I say, in a couple of days time, I'm going to hit you up with a whole bunch more stuff. But for now, just crack on, with, crack on with what I've shared with you in this video, and I'll speak to you very, very soon. You take care.